today, I'm going to be talking to one of the unsung heroes here at Ad Astra. Second World War, mm -hmm. they try, they suggested some uh, movies about mm -hmm. it, and or they suggest us some books in English mm -hmm. or in Russian if you know the language, of course. There is a history of wars. Yeah. It's a history of tragedy, right? And when you spend a big better part of your life reading all that tragedy and sadness, it kind of become carries over into your personality. That okay, what can I do? What what should I do with the rest of my life if I can't land a job, or if I don't want to work at the university because I was seeing that um, the university teachers were not fair with students. I didn't work. I didn't want to work in that environment. I just wanted to have something that I can be myself, that I can enjoy. That's what it I'm always telling students, guys, when you come to our class, you you get to talk to us for only 10, 10, 15 minutes, which is hardly enough for language development. Yeah. The real progress takes progress takes place outside the class. I changed my teaching perspective. Like it's not about only giving or having a two hour class and teaching some concepts or uh, giving knowledge. It's about learning people also personally mm -hmm. and I learned this here, here in the school. Your contribution here to this school is enormous. Like I can't honestly thank you enough because you helped us co-author most of the programs we have here. What is it like writing a program, the textbooks, the outline, the structure, right? And the composition and in which order you're teaching those things, the sequencing and everything. So how do you work out the logistics of writing a program even the students was five and a half level mm -hmm. they would just come to me and they said teacher i'm gonna get eight <laughs> and i said okay when <laughs> and they their response uh, was in two months uh -huh. or in three months and i Is and i said where did you get this idea from there are no really well that's not my department there is no really that's not my jurisdiction that's, yeah. there's no really i'm not the mom so who, whatever my, not my problem and that yeah. attitude will get you nowhere. Let's heard what she said, right? Prepare for a sequel with Miss Firuza once she yeah. gets a nine. Hey, folks. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Adustria Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali, here. Today, I'm going to be talking to one of the unsung heroes here at Adustria. And the person I'll be talking to is a former student and currently working as a proud member of our team. And the person I'd like you guys to meet today is Ms. Firuza Sirocheva. Hey, Ms. Firuza. Hey, thank you for the invitation and thank you for having me. Uh, it's right. We, we should have had this you know, podcast a long mm -hmm. time ago and I guess better late than never, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So would you like to tell our audience a little about yourself, like what you do at the moment? So, uh, as you said, my name is Feruza, and I'm a teacher here um, in Adastra, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been working here for two years and teaching English and teaching young minds in order to help them to get uh, their certificate and to achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, yeah. So I'm guessing teaching hasn't always been like your, you know, final destination. I guess you started out as a history major, right? Yeah. As a, as, as a history student. So would you yeah. like to tell us a little about that as well? Uh, so. Yeah, sure. When I graduated school, I mm -hmm. applied for uh, to pursue my education at Lyceum. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the smart kids. Uh, <laughs> well, I had a yeah. like really, really good memory. I was good at uh, just memorizing facts mm -hmm. and names of people. And with a suggestion of my history teacher, I applied for um, mm -hmm. history department mm -hmm. and I became a student. Mm -hmm. So I studied my bachelor's degree in Bukhara State University. Mm -hmm. And after that, I also pursued my education as a master's degree student mm -hmm. for two years. So basically I studied history for six years at university. Oh my God. How do you even do that? I guess, I guess I can't really honestly mm -hmm. comprehend, you know, buckling down and studying history for six years straight. Does it ever not get boring? 
it was boring, yeah. but does, does it not get boring? Like it was boring, like you said. Uh, after getting into university, just I realized that I made a big mistake <laughs> because of choosing this field. But anyway, after learning English, um, one of my university professors, uh, like he suggested that I can both combine history and English, and I can teach uh, students at university mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. And I just um, made up my mind to go for it, and I applied for a master's degree. But, you know, um, I didn't benefit from this um, master's degree a lot because the, the system of education was the same, like I had mm -hmm. in bachelor's degree. But still, I am really happy to have a job as an English teacher, mm -hmm. and I don't regret it. Okay, so you said that your master's program was more or less the same as your bachelor's program, right? Yeah. So... What'd you do when you realized that? Like, did oh. you have any, you know, second thoughts about doing master's program? Did you, you know, was there ever a point you wanted to quit? Uh, yeah, <laughs> because uh, after getting into, after getting admitted to master's degree, they wanted us to write thesis work. But I landed a job mm -hmm. as a teacher here. Mm -hmm. Kind of days were getting tough. Mm -hmm. And managing both study and work uh, was really hard for me. And uh, they were all the time requiring about just showing up to have a good uh, attendance record. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to show up on time mm -hmm. and to be part of the class. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it because I think that if you are doing like graduate study uh, at university you should be free you should only do your research uh, about your topic about your particular topic but they didn't understand us so uh, there was a time I wanted to quit my study there um, but again one of my teachers just came to stage and he said that you just uh, passed a long way with us um, and that's why you should just um, mm -hmm. finish it and uh, get your diploma and do whatever you want he said mm -hmm. so again with his advice I decided to um, finish my studies my mm -hmm. master's degree and then I'm not working in this field anymore mm -hmm. but maybe in the future I can think about um, becoming a history teacher again mm -hmm. but I'm not sure mm -hmm. so What's about history that's so off-putting to a lot of people out there? Is it the fact that you have to just cram and memorize a bunch of facts and dates and um, random things about the past? Or is it because it's mm -hmm. just not relevant to our everyday life anymore? Oh, well, I don't think so. History can be a diff um, really interesting. But uh, what just made me realize that history wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. It was because of my teachers, <laughs> university teachers. I should admit that. Because when I got admitted into a bachelor's degree, I had like, I was an ambitious girl. Mm -hmm. I had like big plans about becoming the best teacher even in the Republic. Uh, but, you know, like I strived hard uh, in the first semester. I just did everything they, uh, that was required from me. Um, kind of, I did my research. I was just, uh, I was standing out from other students. But at the end of the semester, when one of the teachers just told me, like, I was nothing, you uh, know? Are you for real? Yeah. What did they say? Can you quote them? Do you remember exactly what they said? You're like... You're nobody, you're like you're nothing. Yes, you're nobody. Before you, many just tried uh, to get like a way into our hearts, uh -huh. but uh, you're not an exception. Mm -hmm. No one could do it mm -hmm. and you will also fail to do it. I was, you know, cramming at nights, mm -hmm. searching for like information mm -hmm. from like foreign languages, from Russian to English. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had to use Google Translate because... Mm -hmm. My Russian wasn't that good, mm -hmm. but I had uh, some knowledge from English. Mm -hmm. I can't just um, uh, say it was really good, but still I was I could translate what was written in the textbooks. Mm -hmm. So I translated everything. I tried to find like um, unique information even my teachers didn't know uh, about. They were just 
um, praising me during the class, but mm -hmm. at the end of the semester, like everything changed. Their mm -hmm. attitude um, to students, and they were scolding us for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why, because of the uh, their attitude, I just said that no, I can't be such mm -hmm. teacher, and I can't work this in the, I can't work in this world. So it's better to change it to something uh, mm -hmm. like. Uh, beneficial to my future uh, that's just what happened with you and what they did to you is just downright unfair i honestly yeah. i honestly can't stand it when a teacher uh, lets you know the personal stuff or what's happening home or in their you know personal life carry over into their job yeah like, you gotta draw a clear line okay when yeah. i'm work I'm, it's all work it's when i'm home it's all home yeah but right. they didn't do the same thing with me mm -hmm. it happened with all the students uh -huh. and one of my so faults what do you think what do you think was the problem oh, you, you, you're saying it was your fault that yeah happened. yeah yeah it was one not of, exactly their fault so yeah so blame goes both ways no it's not a blame mm -hmm. i can't say so i just uh, got 100 percent scholarship uh -huh. and they said that you're just wasting the government's money yeah. Okay, so if you're a straight A student, right, you're top of your class. Yeah. How, and you're cramming hard, right? You're looking up stuff no one is looking into, right? Then you're mm -hmm. doing extra research. You're just trying to, you know, stand out. Yeah. To deserve to earn this scholarship. Because what, what else do they want? Uh, because if I got you five, <laughs> let's say, and then <laughs> of the semester, they should pay me like extra stipend uh -huh. and, and like, that's not coming out of their pocket it's coming out of yeah the, the but public budget right i know i know but they didn't want to admit it uh -huh. they all the time blamed us to get scholarship uh -huh. for study there mm -hmm. to study there mm -hmm. and so they made it seem like it was your fault. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me right now? No, no. <laughs> I don't. Because you need to be fired right now. I hope. I hope the head of the department is right now watching this podcast, so yeah, they do something about those teachers. Yeah, hopefully. But we're not dropping any names, right? Yeah. I'm. I'm sure people who is watching this podcast, your former teachers, probably recognize you. Yeah. And will yeah. do something about the situation. Anyway, so what do you do with it? Just put up with it. Yeah. Put up with all the. I just quit. Uh -huh. I was just a typical student. Uh -huh. I was going and wandering around mm -hmm. and I did what they wanted from me, mm -hmm. like showing up and taking mm -hmm. their classes mm -hmm. and just sitting in the lectures, mm -hmm. writing down notes mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and wearing uniform. <laughs> so this is just yeah. being a good girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. not a smart girl anymore. No. Just a good girl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a good girl, a good student. Yeah. It's, that's the thing, you see, all the students I see actually sometimes beat up uh, and, you know, the passion, no passion for their yeah. majors. So part of it is the reason is because of the environment at their university, right? Yeah. Uh, rather than being uh, inspired or yeah. encouraged for the good job they're doing. Right? They, they kill your motivation. Motivation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's just, so th does it have anything to do, what do you, how, how would you, Explain that. Where do you think that unprof unprofessionalism come from? Um, I think it's about, not about all the departments there. Mm -hmm. um, it's about our department. Mm -hmm. Like history, the people who study history tend to be more conservative uh -huh. compared to others. That's when, what I had thought. That's what I had in mind. Yeah. When you suggest something out loud, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You never feel to be heard mm -hmm. by them. Mm -hmm. If you suggest something to change in the system, they try to shut you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel you, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's, it's just, when you, when you study, it's just, I, I don't think it's exactly their fault. Because if you look at human history, oh. it's a, it, our history is a history of wars. Yeah. It's a history of tragedy, Right. And when you spend a big better part of your life reading all that tragedy and sadness, it kind of become carries over into your personality, right? So uh, maybe it's not exactly their fault that, that this happens, right? It's it's like some doctors, right? Because they have a lot of patients with mm -hmm. terrible conditions when they're mm -hmm. at home, they're not exactly you know not not in the mood, right? Yeah, and that kind of carries over into their personal life, right? Yeah. 
So maybe it's be- because of their personality. Even mm-hmm. they are not open-minded people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They think that they are at the top of the authority, uh-huh. and they can make us mm-hmm. what they want from us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they sort of want you to see the world through their lenses. They want you to yeah. fall in line, yeah. be a good soldier. Right? Exactly. It, I think it, you can attribute part of that to the fact that they were brought up in the Soviet Union era. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. During times of uh, yeah. total totalitarianism, right? Yeah. God, a bit of a mouthful. Uh, during times of dictatorship. Yeah. 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 Because we had some young teachers mm-hmm. compared to those, like you said, who lived in Soviet Union, who just mm-hmm. were born in Soviet Union era. Mm-hmm. They were um, kind of uh, understanding, mm-hmm. but still they were under the effect of those teachers. Mm-hmm. At least they heard us. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, in the end, they said, okay, I can't do anything. Mm-hmm. We should change the system. Mm-hmm. Or all young people should work in the system mm-hmm. in order to change it like um, for 100%. Mm-hmm. But if there are still the, those old professors, old teachers, mm-hmm. uh, we can't do anything. Their response was mm-hmm. like that. So how is this uh, new generation coming up different from old generation? In what ways their teaching approach you know, differs from their you know, older counterparts? Um, basically, teaching approach is the same, mm-hmm. but some of them uh, know languages and kind of they um, try to conduct their classes with more information, not only from the textbooks, um, university textbooks, mm-hmm. but they try to find some videos uh, about the, let's say, if you're learning about Second World War, mm-hmm. they try, they suggest us some uh, movies about mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. and or they suggest us some books in English mm-hmm. or in Russian, if you know the language, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in all teachers' classes, it's about having a lecture only and writing down what they say during the lecture. And if we want, but it rarely happens. We can ask questions, but if you just want to ask question in the middle of the lecture, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to scold you. I mean, yeah, probably that's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, because usually you would ask the questions, your questions towards the end of the lecture, Q&A session. Mm, right. But we don't have. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah. <clears throat> it really, I guess, boils down to your teaching approach. Like some teachers uh, have more of a democratic style of, you know, teaching. Yeah. They encourage yeah. students asking questions at any point of the lecture. Other, pe- you know, teachers prefer it, mm-hmm. prefer to have it towards the end. Yeah. Right. Because they, yeah. they don't want to be dis- dis- disturbed while yeah. they're talking. They don't like being... They don't like being cut off in the middle of their speech. So I get I get that. Yeah. Right. And I'm I'm guessing like when you want to get into history, you should expect having to memorize a lot of facts. There's a lot of road learning, right? Yeah. So uh, something I'm curious to ask is, do you really think we still need history now that we have like Google and Chat GPT, when we can just look up some you know facts? Why 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 know the birth date of say mm-hmm. Amir Timur? Mm-hmm. Like when we can just look it up? Why mm-hmm. know the birth date of some mm-hmm. foreign uh, scientist with mm-hmm. whom we're never gonna encounter? We're never gonna probably read more about in the future when we can just look that up when we got all that information on our phones at our fingertips yeah i don't think that we need the history Mm -hmm. Uh but uh, especially the date of birth Mm -hmm. or the some dates related to wars let's Mm -hmm. say or the countries which were involved in the wars we Mm -hmm. don't have to we don't have to know this Mm -hmm. and this kind of facts but um we should in my opinion when i told about it when i spoke up in front of my teachers, I, I, I just told the same thing. Why do we need this history? Mm-hmm. Uh, why do we need the things already happening? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like there are many teachers out there in the university. Uh, they do research about all the past things, um, kind of about the 
education system of Bukhara Emirate mm -hmm. and the, uh, let's say, culture about the uh, particular country. It's about Central Asia, but still, I don't think that a like, large portion of the population can benefit from the history. Just, I think that um, the people in the country should know who their ancestors were, mm -hmm. let's say, who is Amir Timur, mm -hmm. but uh, you don't have to basically know like what he did in a particular year, mm -hmm. what he built, let's say, or with whom he, he was in conflict with. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know it, but it's better that you have these ancestors uh, in order to kind of install the patriotism in mm -hmm. the young people's mind mm -hmm. but still you can have this info on the internet like you said at our fingertips mm -hmm. they're available everywhere um we should know history about in order to just learn some lessons mm -hmm. um like how they solve the particular problem but i can think that those problems can apply today's for today's problems because mm -hmm. like the time today's like period era is totally different than compared to the past mm -hmm. so there is no point in just digging this history out and mm -hmm. um, asking students mm -hmm. learn everything word by word mm -hmm. or just year by year mm -hmm. um, no point in doing so yeah so you just need some so sort of foundational understanding yeah. of history but yes no point digging deep like you yeah. said right yeah so but you need you needed to sort of know your roots, like yes. your, where you come from, who you are. Yeah. So you know who you, you know your identity. Yeah. yeah. You know have identity issues. Like yeah. I'm an Uzbek. Yeah. Right? And that's what my ancestors did in the past. So I'm proud of it. Yeah. I'm proud to be Uzbek. So like you said, it ties back to pat patriotism argument, right? Yeah. And. But I didn't realize uh -huh. when I was uh -huh. a Lyceum student, mm -hmm. I thought that just. What I thought, I could be the best teacher. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the best because mm -hmm. when I was looking at my teacher, he knew everything in the textbooks. Mm -hmm. We had like 12 or 13 books mm -hmm. that we have to learn in order to get into mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. Whatever page you open, he used to answer for all the questions. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm going to be better than him. <laughs> yes. What yeah. I had in my mind in that um, time was just being the better uh -huh. uh, or being exceptional teacher. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that why do I need history? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do with this subject? Mm -hmm. uh, is this subject going to give me like something? Mm -hmm. Like a tangible yeah. benefit, right? Yeah, benefit. Right, right. And, and at the same time, I, I feel like there are a lot of people right now watching this podcast and for us to throwing a jab at history might think that we're, you know, just illiterate because yeah. a lot of people think that you need to know your history, you know, your past, your origins. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you do. I mean, I honestly find history quite fascinating. I, I read history sometimes because the stories are mind blowing. Yeah. Like some events that happened in the war and some of them are even inspirational. Right. The other, the other day I was reading a story about a guy who a sniper, Right, mm -hmm. and he single-handedly, you know, helped Russia win the war against Germany. And that there's mm -hmm. even a movie about him, Enemies at the Gates. You ever mm -hmm. watched that movie? No. It's a historical movie. No, right? I didn't. So it's a, he's, he's a sniper. I guess he knows goes by the name. I guess my memory is a little sketchy these days. So. All right, never mind. Right, okay. there, there's an amazing movie about him, and, and surprisingly. It's a it's a Hollywood movie made about a Russian. Mm. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not into movies. You're you're not. What's your favorite historical movie? You um, said you said that you, some of your young teachers encouraged you to watch movies on history, right? Yeah. So I watched one mm -hmm. with this recommendation, uh -huh. and I liked it. And it's called. Uh, it was about. Second World War, mm -hmm. how Jewish people mm -hmm. were humiliated by uh, German people, German authority. Let me guess. The it was. It's uh, the Schindler's List. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, guys. Schindler, it's about a, a 
Jew who helps his people run yeah. away from yes. the Nazi oppression. Yeah, right? how Nazis like destroyed their mm. cities, mm-hmm. how they burnt them alive. Yes, that, that movie yeah. is you. That's a three four hour long movie. Yeah, and yeah. Oh God, that's just thinking about that movie is so heavy. Yeah, it's not an easy watch. Yeah. That's all I can say. That is not an easy watch because seeing all that tragedy and all the suffering and humiliation done to people yeah. that's just you have to have stomach for violence to watch that movie that yeah yeah just, there's a lot of horror it's worse than a horror movie guys yeah yeah and and the and the, and the worst part it's not a sci-fi movie yeah. <laughs> people think it's it's not all fiction movie okay it's it's based on a true Reality. story yeah yeah it's, a, it's based on a true yeah. story so you're right and now, let's talk a little about your career, you know, switch, your major switch. Like you went from history to English. Yeah. Was was English sort of your backup plan? Mm, I think I can say so because... You, you can or you can't? No, I can't. You, you can't. It wasn't no. a backup plan. No, right. it wasn't. Uh-huh. Um, when I was a second year student, sophomore mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. university... I kind of figured out that I can't land a job mm-hmm. at schools in the city uh, from history subject. And I tried uh, like several of them. I just paid a visit to schools. And every time I got rejection mm-hmm. because they said that we have enough history teachers. We don't have uh, a, a vac- vacancy for a new one. And, um, you know, like for and I said, okay, what can I do? What what should I do with the rest of my life if I can't land a job or if I don't want to work at the university because I was seeing that um, the university teachers were not fair with students. I didn't work. I didn't want to work in that environment. I just wanted to have something that I can be myself, that I can enjoy from the process. And the... The thing popped to my mind was just learning English because when I was a student at Lyceum, I just uh, learned English grammar for a year. I was good at grammar because everything what I was doing, learning these formulas, uh, what was present simple, how we should form a sentence, was present perfect, perfect. Like I learned everything, but I didn't know how to speak and I didn't know what, what was the IELTS stuff. Uh, I had no idea. Basically, just people uh, were telling me there are some four sections and I just decided to give it a shot. And I decided to take up English classes uh, here in the city. And uh, after, you know, like four or five months, basically, um, quarantine started, Mm COVID-19. And, you know, it was the end of my story. (laughs) And I said, okay. I was just trying my hand at a new thing and this just came out yeah. out of nowhere uh-huh. and what am I going to do? Just I printed all the materials, all the Cambridge books, mm-hmm. actual books, I don't know what kind of books, like to name but a few. Uh, I just brought them to my home and I started independent studying. And uh, in a day I was doing four listening tests, two reading tests, and sometimes I was watching videos about how to write essay because basically I had zero idea. And you did it all in one day. Yes. Four listening practices, two reading and then yeah. watch tutorials. And who is this lady? Are you a machine or what? <laughs> um, because like uh, my first aim to learn this language was um, kind of I, I thought that English was a means of survival for me. Yeah. 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 To make a living, mm-hmm. let's say. Mm-hmm. And um, so you just went all in on English. Yeah. All in. Like your life depended on it. Yes. Yeah, all, I all gave of... all my in. Uh-huh. And I spent like 10 hours or 12 hours a day doing this practice stuff. Mm-hmm. And I kind of, my level was six and a half or mm-hmm. six mm-hmm. after four months of study. Mm-hmm. And it was me. Who taught me everything? So you I went, mean, you went comprehend- from like having grammar knowledge to six point five all by yourself. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's that's that that's no easy. That's no easy, guys. Going from grammar level to six point five. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I did my analysis after doing tests. Mm -hmm. So, and then, um, like I decided to take the test in Tashkent because the test in Bukhara wasn't available mm -hmm. for the first time. And we didn't have this app, Speaking IELTS Assistant. I, and I didn't have any idea what kind of topic would appear in my mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. And I just went there. Uh, my listening and reading was pretty good, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure about my uh, productive skills, about my writing and speaking. So I took the test. It was a disaster, <laughs> you know? Like I was in a capital. I was uh -huh. in the capital. There was no one whom I can back up mm -hmm. and I can talk. So So no it, one to back you up, no no family support, no friends. Yeah. All alone. In yes. a big city. Yeah. A little girl. Yeah. Do you feel lost? Yeah, I did. Okay. Did, you, did you feel like crying? Yeah. <laughs> After the exam, I was just in the street. Uh -huh. I didn't know what to do. I was just uh -huh. crying and uh -huh. I said How old I just, were you how old were you at the time? Um nineteen, I think. Uh huh. Okay. And that was your first time being in, in another city. Yeah. Yeah. It was the very first time. Yeah. Okay. Well. Before that, I didn't go anywhere. So after my exam, I just called my mom and I told that I screwed up the test. Mm -hmm. It was just a disaster. And, and she told me like, no, everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And I trust you. I believe in you. You can do it. But still her words couldn't comfort me. Mm -hmm. And I just waited eagerly for 14 days. What would be, what would happen with this like performance in the mm -hmm. test? And the results came out and, you know, it was seven. Wow. I wasn't, I was floating on air <laughs> because I wasn't expecting getting seven kind of, it was a prestige to get the score when I started studying IELTS. But nowadays it's kind of, it feels like average score maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, kid, kids actually come here with a seven. Yeah. Kids come here with a seven. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to, go, to go from seven to eight or nine or whatever, right? Yeah. 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 And my speaking was 5.5. Five. Uh -huh. Writing was six. Uh -huh. And the other like sections, listening was mm -hmm. eight and a half. Mm -hmm. Reading was seven and a half. Mm -hmm. And I was happy for those scores. And after that, with this IELTS certificate, I started teaching English. Mm -hmm. First, I started teaching grammar. And after that, um, some IELTS groups. Mm -hmm. And one day, I just realized that I wasn't being enough for my students. Mm -hmm. um, because in order to, uh, to make their dreams come true, I should be first well qualified. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kind of thought that I wasn't competent enough in this field because you guys were coming. Mm -hmm. I, there were like rumors everywhere about you. And I followed your channel in Alicia Posts. And I started reading the channel from the beginning, very beginning. And kind of I thought that I just compared my knowledge with others. Um, I compared myself and I said, okay, just let's stop teaching. It's time <laughs> to get like knowledge and, um, just making you feel, I mean, getting more experience in teaching and then coming back to this mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And I decided to study with you mm -hmm. and I applied for AM program. At first week, I didn't go to the test. Mm -hmm. And I thought that maybe I was too late, but mm -hmm. I decided to text you. And I was texting in Uzbek and you were getting me back in English. And mm -hmm. I said, wow, uh -huh. this guy is really... Yeah, he's a real it, deal, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really yeah. Deal. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. I actually get because those messages a lot from people. They still text me in, in Uzbek. And when I do instantly, English, please, English, please, English, please. Because still I have that habit. I didn't know about your language preference uh, uh -huh. so i texted you in, in uzbek mm -hmm. you just replied me in english and i said okay this is the place i should go uh -huh. this is where i should study and yeah after a week i joined the group and i'm happy that i'm here now mm -hmm. so right what are some of the highlights of your journey like how 
Yeah. What, what, what were some, you know, highs and, you know, lows of your uh, journey? Learning was, process. Yeah, of, of, the, of the learning process. Yeah. Language learning process. Um, it was speaking. Mm -hmm. I was hesitant. Mm -hmm. I was scared to mm -hmm. speak in front of others. Um, my, as I said, I have a good, like sharp memory. Mm -hmm. Reading and listening were, were kind of a piece of cake mm -hmm. because I knew that if I do my research, I can get to that nine level. Mm -hmm. But as for speaking, if you don't speak, as for writing, if you don't write, just miracles won't happen. Yeah. The only secret sauce to get to that like, like good level is just speaking or writing. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, in one of the classes with you, I just, I got, I used to get stuck, mm -hmm. if you remember. Mm -hmm. When I was telling my part two or when I was sub submitting my part three, I just got stuck and mm -hmm. I didn't know what to speak. Mm -hmm. I just stopped. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation about this stuff and you told me like, you're comparing yourself with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not time yet. Mm -hmm. But I, I told, I just lied to you at that moment and I said, no, I'm not comparing. But I was, I was no. doing it. Let me guess, you still do. Um, Let me guess, she no. still does. No. No, you don't anymore? No. Oh, why did no. you stop comparing yourself to me? Um, is that is that now you're more mature? Now you realize mm -hmm. that's just a road to misery? Yeah. Comparison, yeah. social comparison, right? Yeah. Comes with age, guys. Yeah. So if you're 15, 16 right now and just can't help compare yourself to your peers, <clears throat> it's just a phase in your life. You just have yeah. to wait it out, okay? And it'll be over soon. Don't worry. Yeah. And the next day, mm -hmm. just I had a day off. Mm -hmm. I asked for a day off. And you said, okay, total, totally. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And then for the next class, I showed up being mm -hmm. a totally new me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. You were like really fascinated mm -hmm. and you, you told me like, today mm -hmm. I see mm -hmm. the real you. Uh -huh. Yeah. And after that, everything changed. I practiced with my group mates. I stayed after the class or I came before the class and I was just answering to their question. And in our group, there were a bunch of like smart kids who speaking were really good, better than me. And when I was answering after that, they just provided their answer to my mm -hmm. question and mm -hmm. they made me repeat what they said mm -hmm. because of their assistance. Um, kind of, I improved my speaking too. Mm -hmm. This was hard for me, but the other, I think sections, uh, uh before, pretty... before you carry on, this is a really, really good point you made here, guys. I hope students who are tuned in to get some IELTS tips here, taking notes because pure practice helps a lot. Yeah. And that's what I'm always telling students. Yes, when you come to our class, you're, you get to talk to us for only 10, 10, 15 minutes, which is hardly enough for language development. Yeah. The real progress takes, progress takes place outside the class when you rehearse your lines, when you a ask each other questions, and when you get yourself a partner and do all these things, right, for a good 30 minutes or more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I wish more students realized that. Yeah, and now, nowadays, I also t tell mm -hmm. my students to do the, exactly the same thing mm -hmm. because it really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I was practicing with my peers and uh, I was listening to ideas. Mm -hmm. I was just seeking help from everyone mm -hmm. who, are, who are better than me and having like extra sessions with them outside the class uh, kind of, um, how to say? Did the trick. Yes, yes. Did the trick, right? Yeah. And you see, guys, what's amazing about this lady is she went from 5.5 in speaking to getting a band nine. How do you how do you explain that? And and how long did it take you to go from 5.5 to nine in speaking? Um, Roughly so, two years. Yeah. 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 Because when I got a job here, mm -hmm. I had speaking seven, mm -hmm. uh, overall eight, mm -hmm. and after working for a year i decided to take the to, to sit this test one more time and uh, in that attempt i just pulled off that perfect score in speaking yeah in speaking yeah 
and that was your third attempt yeah. overall. Yeah. So first attempt, you got se- seven? Five and a half from speaking, uh-huh. but overall seven. Okay. Second, second is uh, overall eight, mm-hmm. seven in speaking. Mm-hmm. And third is eight and a half, mm-hmm. nine in speaking. Yeah, there's like straight, you know, evolution of your speaking, <laughs> like a straight line. Yeah. That's... So to what do you sort of ascribe the success to your success in speaking? Um, I should say that teaching um, helped me like significantly mm-hmm. because, you know, there is a policy mm-hmm. um, in Wait. the MPI classes. We have to speak in English. Uh-huh. You're talking about this school for the record, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm talking about my workplace. Uh-huh. So we have this policy in the... I all the time feel that I'm being watched. Mm-hmm. There is a big brother. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah. There are yeah. literally CCTV cameras yeah, yeah. everywhere. Cameras in, in, are everywhere. In the building. And I feel that I'm being watched and I try to be uh, a good teacher, uh-huh. um, let's call it, and especially speaking in reading classes because you have to sometimes simplify the concepts given there. Sometimes students find it challenging to understand it. And when I was using simple language, uh, I just did my practice at home, first of all, because I kind of think that if I don't have my prep before the class, I can just feel, end up like miserable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So you feel unsure of yourself, not confident. And students sense that. Yeah. They sense that. Yeah. The energy is different. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I I mm-hmm. used to do, and I still do, mm-hmm. my research before the class. I just read the passages, and I even sometimes there are some uh, terms, like scientific terms, that I, I don't understand because, you know, uh, we have passages about biology stuff, about zoology, about okay, history is easy for me. Mm-hmm. I can just explain whatever is mm-hmm. given in the passage. But um, from if it's from math or from other subjects, I should study it. I, I, I mean that I should my prep before the class. And when I'm just reading, I imagine myself like I'm teaching a class, a bunch of kids are looking at me and how would I explain it in front of them? And I just imagine, I visualize uh, me as a teacher and I explain it out loud at home and I come to class and if they have any questions I just simplify it mm-hmm. um, and this helped me really a lot mm-hmm. and the second thing that I have to admit that it's ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. Um, in my la- that attempt when I got nine um, I was ready for all this 50 questions in the app um, I just wrote my story I like you suggest to students first write your own story and after that ask the GPT to uh, make it better for you. Mm-hmm. Like of. with yeah, daily expressions, some good collocations and idioms. I did the same thing. I was basically doing homework like my students were doing. And in August, it was in August, uh, like almost 12 or 15 my 15 students of mine were taking the test last year and we had like uh, this speaking um, interviews every day like with 12 students at least I had and when I was having interview with them um, I used to write all the new words that they that they were using in -hmm. their speaking Mm -hmm. I had my laptop in front Mm -hmm. of me Mm -hmm. they were just speaking and I was listening at the same time I was writing I was Mm -hmm. getting ideas Mm -hmm. and getting those ideas and getting those vocabularies and also preparing my answers for all the questions in the app just made me confident uh, on the exam day Uh, well like my examiner was Korean woman and I was I don't know like I was ready for all the questions, Mm -hmm. but but of course, part three were unexpected. Questions were unexpected, but I, I don't know, like answers came with experience. All these reading passages or the podcast that I was listening to kind of contributed to the success. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, contributed to this nine. I can't say that only teaching helped me, but teaching also contributed like 
greatly mm -hmm. in my success. So you were doing other things on the side. Yeah. Like pod yeah. listening to podcasts and yeah. looking up answers on chat GPT and all yeah. that. Yeah. So that was like a period of intense prep yeah. for your exam. Yes. Yeah. I was on the verge of burnout, if you remember. Uh -huh. And as uh -huh. like I made some silly mistakes related to my job mm -hmm. i didn't share like timetable updates <laughs> like several times and the next it, thing happened yeah. is get a message from yeah. this guy angry yeah. message where are the timetables where are the grading sheets yeah, yeah. why didn't you do attendance <laughs> yeah it, it didn't happen all once it <laughs> happened several times and you like usual like uh -huh. you do you sent a message to the staff group chat that i should uh, dropped by your room and <laughs> there was a talk uh -huh. and I told like I'm really tired I'm mm. really exhausted uh -huh. and you asked me reason and I told like there were mm. like a bunch of kids taking the test and I was teaching like four classes a day and I was doing my prep for the exam um, because when I um, register for the exam I feel under the pressure mm. um, even no one knows about it because not no one I don't tell about my exam day to my students, but I know that you guys know it. My mm -hmm. teachers know it. Mm -hmm. And I uh, want to make sure that I should bring something good to the table. And I should, uh, like, how to say, prove that mm -hmm. I'm also competent. Mm -hmm. I'm also well qualified for this job. Mm -hmm. um, and I was under the pressure. Mm -hmm. So I forgot everything, mm -hmm. like my job here like sharing this timetable with students. Mm -hmm. But you understood me. We had a good conversation. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Mm -hmm. And the next day was my exam day. Mm -hmm. So what you said during our conversation, or let's call it therapy session, mm -hmm. um, made a trick. Mm -hmm. Did a trick. Mm -hmm. And I did my best. Right. And so all... So all those, you know, things happening at the same time, right? how did you, how did you pull yourself together and get through all that? What really came to your rescue? Was there any moment of epiphany or was there any moment, how did you like muster up all that energy at the time and just kept going, kept pushing with all that, you know, with, with your work and your personal life and your boss yelling at you? Right? How do you do, deal with mm. all that? So where, where do you get all that energy? I would know that everything is temporary. Mm -hmm. I can get through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said in the meeting, meeting uh, if, if I'm in a dark tunnel, mm -hmm. one day I will just go through it. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I will see the light. Mm -hmm. It was my motivation. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what I'm just uh, being through is temporary mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, one day everything will finish and I will see the, um, how do, the bright days will yeah, come, bri right? Yes. Bright days. I just uh, comforted myself. Bright days are ahead. Yeah. 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 I, that's, that's great perspective. That's great philosophy to have. I, 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 guess I, I honestly go through a lot of, you know, turbulence in my life too. I, and when that happens, when I tell myself, okay, I just need to sit tight. Okay, yeah. I'm 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 entering I'm entering chaotic waters now, or things are about to get rough. Okay, the boat is gonna get rocky. Yeah, right. It's gonna get shaky. Right. Yeah. All you gotta do is to just sit tight on the boat, but jump, yeah. don't jump off the boat, because if you do, you're gonna get eaten by sharks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the waters are way more dangerous, you see, guys, than the boat. So sit tight on the boat. Yeah. This is gonna be fine. Okay. But like several times, quitting my job uh -huh. came to my mind. It, the, the thought of quitting your job crossed your mind and please yeah. tell me I wasn't the reason. No, no. But you're being honest right now, are you? Yes, I you am are. honest. So I wasn't, I wasn't any part of that, okay? Because I know I sometimes push teachers a little too hard. Yeah. You do. I, I admit, I admit that. I'm a little bit of a uh, slave driver, so to speak, to someone who just makes yeah. them work, 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 all there is to life. That's our philosophy here at, at Astra. And I know that's not healthy, that's not sustainable, but I just yeah. can't help it. And sometimes that takes a big toll on teachers, right? Yeah. You guys have to pay the price. I 
I sincerely apologize for that to all the Firuzas out there, including this one. <laughs> Not only to Firuzas, maybe to all teachers here. Okay, sure. So all our <laughs> staff, right? I, mm -hmm. I do apologize, ladies, but, but we're going to work. Well, well, my feeling is like work is what defines us. Yeah. Work is what defines us. All right, well, what do you think is the, like, the big plus of working at Ad Astra? Speaking of the school, mm. right? Looking back, uh, you think it was a good decision? Yeah, it was. Jumping on the ship? Yeah, it was 100%. Uh -huh. Because, uh, as I said, after getting my first uh, score in uh -huh. IELTS, I also worked in two places, mm -hmm. in two educational centers. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to compare mm -hmm. those places with this one mm -hmm. because this is a place uh, where I learned a lot of stuff mm -hmm. personally and academically mm -hmm. um, in my previous workplaces we weren't told anything about this mental health mm -hmm. or the psychology stuff uh -huh. um, I'm really interested in psychology after like mm -hmm. I've been interested in psychology after working here because when I was working in my previous Uh, centers I wasn't that um, careful about my students um, feelings mm -hmm. what they were like actually going through mm -hmm. but you taught me like we have to not only consider about their current like performance in the class maybe there are um, something mm -hmm. that they are experiencing right now that we don't know mm -hmm. and I changed my teaching perspective. Like it's not about only giving or having a two hour class and teaching some concepts or uh, giving knowledge. It's about learning people also personally. Mm -hmm. And I learned this here, here in the school. And academically, I can say, like I said, from seven and a half getting to this eight and a half, Um, the school helped me a lot and I'm really grateful um, to you mm -hmm. and to Alicia teacher that you offered me a job here because when I was a student I was about to graduate this Alicia teacher came to me and, and he said okay I got it I got an offer to you mm -hmm. and I said what I, kind I, of I, offer I, I want to make you an offer you can't refuse <laughs> I probably said yeah, that yeah and, and godfather style <laughs> Yeah, and I said, what kind of offer are you going to make? And he said, so we're launching our school um, and we need teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for recruit recruiting stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, Muhammad Ali, teacher, is responsible for academic stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you think that I can work with you? Mm -hmm. But deep inside, I was so, I don't know, I was over the moon. Yeah, dying to get this job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and I said, yes, of course, I'm going to do it. But you came mm -hmm. in the room and mm -hmm. you said, the only criteria that I can offer you this job is getting eight. Mm -hmm. And I fell down. Uh -huh. because uh, was it I wasn't, before your exam or after yeah, your before, exam? Before, before, before your my exam, exam yes. Wow. There was still a month yeah. to go my exam, to go to my exam. That was not a sensible thing to do. Okay, I hate my younger self. Okay, I'm glad I'm not that guy anymore. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and you said, if you can't make it eight, mm -hmm. then just forget about this job, this uh, did offer. I, did I literally say that? Did I literally say yeah. forget about I, I cannot Because possibly be that harsh. You Come were. On, guys, give me a break here. <laughs> so I said, okay, I will just take this eight and uh -huh. I get into this call as a uh -huh. teacher. And I took the exam. I was kind of quite sure about my reading and listening, but mm. still um, about my writing as well. Uh, still, I was hesitant about my speaking, but the result was pretty good. And I pulled off this aid mm -hmm. and I started working here from the second day of the school. And that's the thing. She is one of the pioneer teachers here. Yeah. Right. right? That's uh, actually, I, I've been meaning to ask you this, like you see, your contribution here to this school is enormous like i can't honestly thank you enough because you helped us co-author most of the programs we have here if yeah. like there, there are 
you deserve a lot of credit for helping us uh, write the IF curriculum and you deserve almost all the credit for helping us write the PF program. All right, no credits, credit goes to Alicia, okay? Let's keep him out of it here. So uh, can, can you sort of reflect on that experience as well? What is it like writing a program? Like the textbooks, the outline, the structure, right? And the composition and in which order you're teaching those things, the sequencing and everything. So how do you work out the logistics of writing a program? Well, first of all, uh, when you're creating a program for mm -hmm. a particular level, you should take into consideration whom you are teaching mm -hmm. in the class. If it is, uh, like you said, PF levels, uh, like beginners. For our audience, it's PF stands for pre-foundation. Yeah, pre-foundation. Right, right. Yeah. They may not understand the terminology we uh -huh. use here. Uh, our bad guys. I'm sorry. Okay. My bad. So IF stands for IELTS, IELTS Foundation. foundation right? Yes. PF and for pre-IELTS. Pre-IELTS Foundation. So basically, in terms you guys understand, PF is the beginner level. Yeah. Right. And that it itself split into three levels. Right. Yeah. And then IF is the foundation level is the intermediate, upper intermediate. Yeah. Level. Intermediate, upper intermediate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's like beginner level students, if they're learning English for the first time, like coming here, um, the like attention, the majority of the attention should be just directed to their translation mm -hmm. and like. Uh, learning vocabulary stuff mm -hmm. and after that like getting some words getting to know some words uh, or enriching their vocab level vocab base then we can move on to this listening mm -hmm. because when they i think that it's my opinion so aren't we doing that simultaneously here like they, they get three times a week reading and the other three days listening grammar if it's like pfa mm -hmm. like beginner level mm -hmm. it's just having six classes reading reading mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. classes and after some time when they get into pfb level uh, they will start having one grammar right, let, and let, at let, the let, same let, time they will yeah. have reading and listening classes let, let me pause you here for a minute mm -hmm. like do you think it's a it might be a bad idea to teach pfa level students like the beginner beginner like zero mm -hmm. nothing no english level students only reading Maybe we should expose them to a little bit of uh, audio stuff, audio content as well, so they can start learn, you know, recognizing words, pronunciation. Yeah, I'm I'm working on it. Uh -huh, you are. Yes, okay. I'm working on it. I'm relieved. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, about this listening yes. stuff, like uh -huh. I'm just searching for, mm -hmm. uh, like simple to like mm -hmm. basic English, mm -hmm. so when they also listen so that they can understand. I, I have a textbook suggestion. What do you think of headway textbooks? Headway. Like, you know, when, when our school had just started, we did have beginner program back then, and our main textbook was yeah. headway. Yeah. But what do you think of those textbooks? I personally love them. Yeah, I think we should have. We should add them to yes. the PF program, right? Yeah, yeah. But for some reason, I, I, I always get turned down by Alicia. It's like, no, I, I don't want that. I want stories. I want stories. I'm like, come on, buddy. They're old fashioned. Yes. There are no co colorful images. Some yeah. of them not age appropriate. Yeah. There are stories about people yeah. doing adult stuff. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're teaching kids those things, right? Yeah. And we should add something like mm -hmm. um, maybe a little scientific, but mm -hmm. written in basic English. Mm -hmm. um, I like the books that we used when we opened the skull, if mm -hmm. you remember, our reading stuff wasn't about stories. Sco scholastic grant yeah. textbook. Scholastic. Yes. That's an American standard textbook. Yeah. And I've been dying to get it on the program. Yes. But Alicia, for some reason, like, no, I don't like it. I want stories. I want stories. Because it's old fashioned. This guy's yeah. so old fashioned. It's time to kick him out. No, right? it's not about <laughs> him being old fashioned, but I kind of feel that. Uh, after just reading stories, translating them mm -hmm. all the way, mm -hmm. if we switch to something scientific, because mm -hmm. starting from the book issues, mm -hmm. there are um, passages about uh, like health mm -hmm. stuff, about um, even alcohol, mm -hmm. about some family stuff, marriage mm -hmm. stuff, love. But the students who were translating only the stories mm -hmm. can't maybe just 
um, switch to shift to yeah. this educational stuff. Yeah. So there should be something in the middle um, that can bridge the gap. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm working on it, mm-hmm. and hopefully. Alisher teacher will be happy. Okay, but make sure decision. make sure he doesn't know that this idea came from me, okay? Okay. And I doubt he's going to watch this podcast. So we're good. Okay. We're good here. I, I want Scholastic textbook on the curriculum. I love it. I Because I, if you look at the table of contents, they yeah. got text on everything, literally yeah. everything. They got on animals, they got on... People, mm, famous yeah. people, celebrities. Mm. Yeah. Like holidays. Mm-hmm. Important like events and what's and great, history. great about this textbook that at the end of every chapter you get multiple choice questions, yeah. which is something that you don't get, you know, in stories. In yeah. stories, and what I love about multiple choice questions is the fact that you can you can then you know create t- tests based on them, reflection tests, yeah, yeah. and make the process more standardized. Because honestly, right now I have little clue what teachers are doing for their reflection with PF level, and I don't like this fact. Because I'm yeah. a little bit of a control freak, and I have to know wh- where everyone is. Yeah. And I don't get that feel unless I'm being reported the students' results. Do you, do you do guys report me the students' results? It's just hard to make anything of those results because you got hundred questions. Yeah. Right? Someone are making hundred questions, mm-hmm. and someone are making fifty questions. That, that is all it, over it the place. Work this no, way. no, and I know it's gonna one day backfire. And we, yeah. get, we have to do something about it. Okay, this is going to be our next objective after this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad sure. we're, we're talking this stuff over. All okay. right, back to working at Ad Astra, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, there are a lot of people who would love to know more about this school, right? Yeah. So do you have any pet peeves about working here? And you have to be completely honest, mm-hmm. right? Right, guys? You want the honest answer, right? Say something, yeah. Yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So I don't like paperwork. Uh-huh. Um, so what is it about paperwork? You know, like um, the grading sheet? Y- yes, uh-huh. grading sheet, mm-hmm. doing some attendance like uh-huh. traditional schools uh-huh. do. Okay. But we, we need it, I should oh, admit. Of course we, we do. need. We need. I don't like this clock out checklist. Uh-huh. Why not? Just signing every day. It's, it's, it's my, can I tell you something? It's my favorite thing about this school. Do you know why? Why? Because it has a little sweet quote at the bottom saying that not yeah. he, all heroes wear capes. Yeah. And that's my only way of communicating with you guys because I don't see you every day. That, but that message I left there is for you. It's my way of connecting with you guys. And, okay. I, and I, every night before I leave, every night before I close up this place, the, I make sure I look at that. I make sure I go through all the comments students, the teachers mm-hmm. leave. Sometimes they leave all dumb comments. Yeah. Like, I'm hungry. Get me some burgers. I'm like, yeah. bro, get yourself a burger. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't think that everyone who is putting 10 mm-hmm. out of 10 mm-hmm. is being honest. Uh-huh. Sometimes me, uh-huh. myself. I just put 10 there mm-hmm. out of 10 because there is a mm-hmm. like section. Mm-hmm. How would you rate um, today mm-hmm. your um, you should just evaluate uh, your performance, maybe your day generally. Mm-hmm. And I just put 10. Mm-hmm. Why? When I feel down uh-huh. or stressed sometimes at the work, at work, um, because I know that if I put three, let's say, <laughs> or four, you're going to tag my username in the group chat and ask uh-huh. about what happened to me. Sometimes I want to just keep everything secret. Uh, to yourself, right? Yes. You yes. don't want people like me sticking their nose in, into your personal stuff, your business. Not, not yeah. about this. Uh-huh. I just try to mm-hmm. manage all my problems myself. Uh huh. Trying to be independent, right? Yeah. So yeah. you don't want someone breathing down your neck and telling yeah. you what to do. Because in the group, there are like 25 members. Like everybody is reading your message, uh-huh. how you felt today. Uh-huh. And I don't like this idea. But we're all family. It's I like, know. It's like when you get home, mommy asks, how was your day, cutie? So, <sighs> Is there a problem with mommy asking that in front of your dad and your siblings? No, it's not a problem, but still. So then what's the issue here? It still feels weird. Mm Kind of. I don't feel like Mm -hmm. I'm being someone like grumbling about stuff, Mm -hmm. like about some stuff that Mm -hmm. I don't like. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whether I should admit or not, it's my workplace. This is what 
I, am I required? Am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do, and uh, complaining or it's not just your nature. Yes, That's not yeah. your character. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah. It's just I'd do the same. Even if I had the worst day in my life, I'd leave ten there. You know why? Because at least you can reframe your mind. Yeah. You can at least trick your mind into thinking you're having a good day. Right. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you're lying to yourself, you're right, but uh, what's the alternative? The alternative is digging yourself into a hole. My day is terrible, my life sucks, yeah. I, I hate people, no one is helping me. It's all self-deprecation and, 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 and you, know, you get all those sometimes suicidal thoughts. That's just dark, dark, dark place to be in. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want that, I don't like that. Having this toxic thoughts mm -hmm. is way more destroying than mm -hmm. just lying to yourself. Yeah, lying to yourself. Yeah, yeah, you can you can do that. I mean, think about all these adults, like our you know parents or you know grandparents. They're not always having an amazing day, right? But they're yeah. they're often nice. They're often kind, right? Well, what do you think of office drama? Right, we have. We have a lot of drama here at this school, right? <laughs> I was told that too much drama. Actually, one of the teachers told me they mm. want to get a university job because they don't like too much drama at this school. They want to have a simple, uh -huh. boring life. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Like go to work, teach, go home, get paid and be done. And this also came to my mind. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. So what did you do about it? I did, I did nothing, you know. Recently, mm -hmm. I'm being honest here, mm -hmm. I was offered a job mm -hmm. uh, as an examiner. Mm, fantastic. Let me guess. You got that offer from Ms. Nazima. Yeah. <laughs> she offered me you that You know everything. Huh? You know everything. Uh, well, no, I actually guessed it. You know why? Because mm -hmm. she reached out to me with the same offer. Uh, I see. Yeah. I see. But you see, the thing is, that job is below our pay grade. Mm -hmm. It's way it's below. It's not about payment. No, no, no. I said uh -huh. pay grade. Oh, okay. it's, an, uh -huh. it's an expression. If something is way uh -huh. below your pay grade, pay grade, it's you're just wasting your skills on oh, yeah. sitting and just listening to someone. And worst of all, it's CEFR test, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the students who take CEFR the test, they are IELTS fails. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? That, yeah. So it's like <laughs> that, that's that'd be a nightmare. Yeah. Right, even if they paid me a million dollars, I wouldn't go, right? Yeah. Because I need my sanity. <laughs> yeah, but I like filled the application form, mm -hmm. and they accepted it, mm -hmm. and they of course it, they would, <laughs> <laughs> and they just wanted to arrange some interview mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. I give it a long thought. Mm -hmm. I just said, okay, what I. If I'm quitting my job here in the school, mm -hmm. am I going to be like an examiner sitting one chair and mm -hmm. looking at the some people? Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I'm if my just score is not fair, let's mm -hmm. say, um, am I going to ruin their day or am mm -hmm. I, I going to ruin their, uh, let's say, ambitions or goals? Uh, I would affect maybe on people on a negative way. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's not. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. My job here, way better, maybe a hundred times better than being an examiner. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, no, I'm not going to be. Mm -hmm. But this, the thought of being an examiner or working at university also crossed my mind. Uh, I'm honest. But no, I just can't imagine uh, my life mm -hmm. without my students mm -hmm. and without the... Uh, people uh -huh. right now I'm being surrounded uh -huh. and constant bothering by me yeah yeah you, you even, missed that. even <laughs> yes it has become a part of my life yeah that's I mean yes we have our ups and downs but still I feel like I, I'd like to think we're a good family I'd like to think we're a good team yeah, yeah. we are mm -hmm. but you know what I wouldn't be upset if you decided to I know take a you know Go, you know detour make a detour like right now mm -hmm. she's headed this way and i wouldn't be upset if you decided to give examinership a shot or decided to give teaching at university a shot you know why 
Why? Because in a year's time, you'd be back. I'm that confident. Because in a year's time, you'd be back oh. in a teacher. You know why? Because there's more to teaching than, I guess, I guess there is more to teaching than all those other things like environment or pay or whatever. It's also about, you know, having... It's, it's, it's also about like a sense of belonging because you're going to realize you don't belong in that tribe. I, I, I wrote a long message about tribal, tribalism, like we're still tribes, right? Yeah. You want to leave one tribe and join another and you really think they're going to let you be one of them? Or not exactly, unless you help them build that tribe from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something else to keep in mind. But, but at the same time, you, you, you just can't help thinking about missed opportunities, like half my life would be different if I tried this job or that job. So you have that opportunity cost, right, um. in your mind. So, yeah, but, but whatever, you know, decision you make, I think I, I, I just want you to know that we totally support it. This is one. And two, don't be afraid. Be bold. If your heart tells you you should go and try that job, go and try that job. Make those mistakes. Or who knows, maybe it's going to work out better than this job, right? So okay. yeah, do what your soul, your heart desires. Yeah. And only then you're gonna, you can have a you know, fulfilling life. Yeah. And we're in, in, we are never in a million years going to stand in your way and tell you, you know, to stay, to stick around with us. Yeah. Right. But, but at the same time, I understand as, a, as one of the heads of the school that we need to create channels opportunities for growth within the company and that's part of the reason why i started this podcast part yeah. of the reason so we can amplify our influence we can amplify our reach we can give uh, our teachers here our staff and a platform where they could come in and share their stories get some public exposure and recognition right and yeah. build from there so that's what we had in mind and and let me tell you this this is just the beginning yeah, we got a lot more exciting stuff coming in store. In store. All right, yeah, sure. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, uh, one last question before we move on, move chapters. So, but you have to be completely honest, right? Sure. Honest is the best yeah, policy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, who's your favorite colleague at the school? You have My to pick one. One only. Only one, I'm afraid, because there's no room for two people in that boat. Yeah. My favorite colleague. Colleague. You have to pick one. And, uh, let me tell you something. They're not going to watch the podcast anyway. So. <laughs> no, they're going to yeah. watch. But they, they, You think they will? Yeah. Okay. Even if they don't, I'm going to make short of this part of the podcast. I'm going <laughs> to put it on social media. Sorry, Mukadima. <laughs> uh, I know that you're going to kill me, uh -huh. but I have to say that um, I really respect Miss Guli. Uh-huh. I love her. You mean Miss Gulsara? Gulsara, yes. Because we had other teachers named yeah. Miss Guli too. Uh -huh. Yes, Gulsara. Uh, mm -hmm. I love being in the company of her. Mm -hmm. uh, I love like conversations we have. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of we have the same soul. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you guys just click. Yeah. You two click. Yes. You're like, you're like soulmates. Yeah. All right, yeah. So what, what is it about Miss Gulsara that makes her stand out from all other like people working here i don't know like, I, I was expecting you'd say someone like miss uh Firuza. she because you guys have been working together yeah. since day one yeah i know right? and i i also like her but you're making me pick up only one teacher uh -huh. here uh -huh. and uh, she's like you're, I, I just like, wanted to say three teachers uh -huh. no not three five okay oh five sh sh sure 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 can I? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, of course. Um, Grusara, uh -huh. Mukadima. Th that, uh, that's in, that's in the order of the most no, favorite to least no. favorite. Okay. No, 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 no. It's not. The, that's They're randomly, order. randomly, randomly. Um, and um, Firuza, I said. Uh huh. You. Uh, okay, but I'm not. I'm. 
am I a, am I a colleague? We, uh, yeah, we are. Of course, we are. Of course we are. We are. You I mean, say we, that you're uh, only the what, boss. What I what I meant is like we never share a group. We never share. Uh, a group. You mean that the teachers whom I shared no, the group no, no, with? No, in general, you can even name receptionists if you want. You can name janitors. Y- yeah. You can mean, name the gardener. I mean. <laughs> okay, sure. And I'll share teacher. Uh, okay, sure. I'm surprised Miss Markabo didn't make it to the list. I'd expect that she is on the list. Uh-huh. She is on but the list. But not on top five. Um, oh, that hurts. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, Mrs. Mahabo. Because you guys are just getting to know each other, right? It's, yeah. So it's the first time you're working yeah. together. First time since you guys got PI eighteen, I guess. And no, it's PI two. PI two, right? We're teaching together. L- let me ask you something real quick. Are you mm-hmm. open to the possibility of teaching with me, sharing a group with me, like not? Why have, not? And not have A and M program, but have M and F program or F and M program. Let's make it M A M and A F F F because or F and M. F and M. Oh, we'll come uh-huh. up with that name later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But, but here's the deal. My mm-hmm. ask is, I have one ask, and I guess you know what that ask is. Nine. Of course. <laughs> oh yeah. But oh, yeah. you know, like nine has never been. Mm-hmm. Your my partner. ultimate goal. Uh huh. It it never is. It never um, is. It's just one of the one of the you know steps. I've never been that. after a nine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be. And you know, I'm sh- I'm surprised that you didn't reach out to me after that last staff meeting where I told you guys to reach out if you want to get a nine in a year's time. Yeah, because because it's not your priority anymore. You don't want it. Not not anymore. Mm-hmm. As I said, it has never been my priority. My priority is. Just helping those who need mm. my help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. teaching and mm-hmm. the students are coming here mm-hmm. to get the help from me, to right. get assistance. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I just accomplish my goal, like helping them, mm-hmm. then it's enough for me. All right. So I'm, I'm not really trying to get you into this race, right? Not nine, race to nine, chase to nine. But don't you think you're going to have, you know, more sort of influence and reach once mm. you get a nine? Like more, you're going to have higher level students in your class, students with seven wanting to get eight. Because right? I that, don't want. That, 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 I actually, that's what I realized it, with our admissions. Like every time we have admission, right, our student level, applicant levels keep going up, up and up. So when we started up, started out, our requirement score for a student to get into our program was 6.5. Yeah. But I guess remember. what it is now? It's 7.5. Yeah. To sign up for the program, you have to be on 7.5 level with your reading and listening. That's yeah. insane. I, we actually have some students with an eight taking our program. And that's a whole different environment, you know, you know, it's just you feel more excited because you have it's you don't feel like teaching students. You feel like just collaborating with people who are more or less, your, you know, your level. I don't know about it. But it's just exciting prospect. That's what all I'm trying to say. Well, what's exciting is that it's also a personal challenge because now you need to level up to be able to cater to that audience, yeah. which is something I realized I found out about myself. Now that I have those students with 7.58 sitting in my class, I have to I have step up my game like I started I actually stopped using not entirely but memorized answers like we have 90% of the time freestyle class which is so much more fun yeah right and that's a that's a that's a whole new challenge for me because every time a student answers a question I have to answer it myself and then we discuss we debate we sort of you know compare contrast vocabulary see how we can make the answers sound better Right, yeah. They're just generally trying to refine our language skills. Yeah. So that's an exciting prospect. It's not really about the number, the fame, or the money that comes with it. It's really more about just bringing some, you know, spicing up your life. That's yeah. what it is, right? I'm doing it because I think I can. I'm doing it because I deserve better. I'm doing it because, well. But I, I think it's hard, but I want to prove myself wrong. I want to make it mm-hmm. easy. I want to make it so easy that I can get a nine every time I sit the test. But who do you think that should teach those who mm-hmm. can't have, like, who doesn't mm-hmm. have the seven and a half? 
or, or you, you, you who can, will help them to get to that seven I'll, and a half I'll, level? I'll, I'll answer that question. Those mm -hmm. students with seven, seven point five, who come to your class, they come and learn from you, and then take it to other students, which but, is what's, what uh -huh. what we are doing here with the AMA program. Ninety nine percent of the students we're teaching are actually teachers. They work yeah. at major schools in the city. They do, right? Yeah. And they come here wanting to learn, get better, uh, get some skills and knowledge, right? They level up their uh, English or whatnot. They come here for the experience because they like being part of this uh, environment, inspiring, fun, and exciting. At least I'd like to think so, right? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It really yeah. is. They want some of that positivity in their lives. Yeah. Right? They want to wake up in the morning feeling like they're on a mission yeah. or on a big mission along with other people. It just feels uplifting seeing uh, people around you who are driven ambitious yeah because that what we're doing here is not really exactly you know teaching learning english we're sharing energy some of the positivity with each other that which make us feel alive yeah because when i was also your student i was shocked mm -hmm. you know um you were the first teachers mm -hmm. who were recommending students to have enough sleep Except Alicia, please. No, he did the same thing <laughs> after you. Including him? Okay, sure. Yeah, he started saying students like, how many hours of sleep did you get last oh. night? And I just asked him one day a question, why are you asking this? Mm -hmm. Because most teachers, like in mm -hmm. traditional schools mm -hmm. or in other places, let's say, they ask students uh, not to sleep mm -hmm. or just having four or to five hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. But you were guys asking us to have like adequate amount of sleep mm -hmm. so that we can perform better uh, our like retention memory retention is like uh, better mm -hmm. so it was the first time like i was having positive teachers mm -hmm. and i liked this environment yeah we were like allowed to speak up and we were discussing about everything literally everything in your classes mm -hmm. like movies songs like mm -hmm. actors actresses everything yeah and i liked this environment it was not about just mm -hmm. learning and coming to class mm -hmm. but it was also learning um like everything mm -hmm. and i liked this environment mm -hmm. and that's why i think that your mm -hmm. students also including mine mm -hmm. because uh, like we used to have um our students take your classes too and they came to us and then they say his class was amazing <laughs> yeah i got envy I got, uh, yes envious, and i uh, uh, yes envious uh and i asked like what is like mm -hmm. uh different mm -hmm. about his classes and they just uh told me you were inspiring mm -hmm. and you were motivating them mm -hmm. they kind of even the students was five and a half level mm -hmm. they would just come to me and they said teacher i'm gonna get eight <laughs> and i said okay when <laughs> and they their response uh, was in two months uh -huh. or in three months and i <laughs> and so, i said uh, where did you get this idea from uh -huh. they always told about you and mm -hmm. yeah i also started like motivating my students because it is important because mm -hmm. you see it's with us we have i'd like to think that we have broad mm -hmm. view in mind broad view of teaching and to a lot of people they usually narrow it down to one thing and that is information acquisition it's just about learning a bunch of facts and stuff concepts and knowledge yeah you know? now that's very shallow and limited way of looking at teaching Teachings can be much more than that. It's about, it's about yes, getting results. You need yeah. that. And the other thing you need is about, is, is about experience. It's about creating unique, memorable experience, right? Because here's what I'm telling myself. I tell myself, well, if I'm going to be spending the next three months of my life, right, with this guy or girl, the student, it's like being in a relationship. Yeah. It's like dating someone, right? Yeah. Then we better make the most of it. We better have a lot of fun before we decide to call it quits and go our yeah. ways, right? Yeah, yeah. So 
it's not just results, it's also about experience. And that's, that's the reason why sometimes you see me talk about things like air temperature, yeah. right? Room temperature, air quality, and what other things we, we got here. You got like students sitting, air sitting arrangements. Yeah. yeah and, and we got, you know, sometimes I literally offer students water, coffee, tea. No, for real. Yeah. For real, I do. If they ever say yes, I'll get them coffee. Yeah, I know. How do you know that? It's actually Be- because a new thing I started. I haven't been doing it much. I, it's no, just, no, no, no. You did it before. You I did, did it before. I but, never got anyone coffee. Do you do you do you remember mm-hmm. uh, in in our group mm-hmm. there was a girl called Muhinur mm-hmm. and Lana okay. Milana? Okay. Can you remember them? Yeah, I do. And one day, if I'm not mistaken, one of them said, mm-hmm. "I'm hungry." Mm-hmm. She was hungry in your class, and you said, "Okay." do you want me to Mm -hmm. order some coffee and some snacks for you? Mm -hmm. Um, So I just vividly remember that um, you were doing it. Are you sure? Yes. I I don't don't recall doing that exactly. At least you offer it. But I don't don't remember ever getting a student coffee. or No, you didn't. I do remember offering students snacks though. Like I do it sometimes. If I have some snacks in my bag. Uh Yeah. No, you literally offered. Mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, But she said, no, I don't want. Yeah. But even if she said yes, I wouldn't have probably said. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't have probably done that. I'd probably say it's a joke, but it's not a joke anymore. At this point, I'm serious about it. Right. Uh And I hope students not watching this part of the podcast. (laughs) Because next thing I know tomorrow, (laughs) everyone's going to ask me for coffee and snacks. (laughs) Mr. Muhammad Aziz, keep it to yourself, okay? Your friends can't find out I said it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, working here can be a lot of fun, right? Yeah. So, what do you think are some of your, you know, strengths and weaknesses as a teacher? And do you ever, you know, when you do sort of self-reflection, right? What do you think is your strong suit? Some a strong suit. Yeah. I've never given a thought mm-hmm. about my strong suits mm-hmm. and about I, I do know about my weakness. Mm-hmm. Um but I don't know about my strong suit. Mm-hmm. Would I've, you say it's patience, the fact that you're very patient? I, I can tell you are, because I remember there was this one time we had a difficult student and she was you know, oh. borderline, borderline suicidal. And, and when she joined the program, when you compare what she was like when she joined the program and what she was like when she graduated, and for the record, she got seven, right? Yeah, she got You could never have thought that she would one day, you know, yeah. get anything more than six, let alone, yeah. let alone seven. And how, how do you do that? She was she was around for two years here though, was she? Yes, a year almost and a half? two years. Almost a year and a half. A, yeah, a year Maybe and a half. Probably a year and a half because the school is barely two years old. So yeah. How how did you do that? How did you deal with that student? So what did you guys do? You want to give us some story? No. Yeah. Uh, like I was her speaking and writing teacher mm-hmm. at the beginning. He was, uh, she was like barely breathing in my classes like she was she was sitting with shaking hands Mm -hmm. i don't know maybe she had some problems in her family Mm -hmm. but i always tried to reach her out about everything that uh, she was going through in her life i used to ask her like personal questions sometimes i um even there were moments when she was sitting in front of me, I used to just hold her hands in order to comfort her. Mm-hmm. I used to hug her even in order to make her comfortable in my mm-hmm. class. She was like too scared. Um, she couldn't speak. When she started speaking, her jaws like began shaking. And... It was the very first time that I had come across with such a student. And I used to think about her a lot. Even in the evenings, I couldn't sleep because of her. Because I kind of had a mission in front of me. I said that 
she is my challenge. Mm -hmm. I will help her uh, to get this her desired score. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just all the time seeking ways how to make her speak in the class. I used to ask like two simple questions about. Uh, I I used to ask how was her day, let's say, or what she ate, mm. or how she slept. Mm. Her response was all the time like negative. Mm -hmm. She said, "Okay, teacher, I'm good," but in reality, after the class, in front of everyone, she said, "Teacher, I'm good," mm. but. After the class, she came to me, she approached me, and she was telling me, like, no, teacher, nothing is good in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, like, she tried to commit suicide several times. I knew about it. And it was hard for me to work with her. And, but I did it. I became, like, polite. Mm -hmm. I just acted like her mother, let's say. And I tried to know everything um, that was happening in her life. Um, like, even it's personal. And sometimes she used to text, would text me about, teacher, I can't go today to your class. And I would ask her, like, what's the reason? Mm -hmm. And she was honest with me. And I just would give him day off mm -hmm. if, whenever she wanted. But after some time, we changed. She... Because her gra group graduated, she had to change her teachers. And she came back to me mm -hmm. and she told me like, teacher, sorry, I can't study with other teachers. Mm -hmm. It is only you who can teach me. Mm -hmm. And I was just crying. And when mm -hmm. I heard her sincere comments about mm -hmm. me and she just saved my name as hope mm -hmm. in her contact numbers. Oh. Yeah, I was her wow, hope. That's... And she just, wow. you know, like, she was too attentive. Mm -hmm. One time, I remember that she sent me a message. Teacher, today, this is the first time you put a reaction of heart into my message. Mm -hmm. She just kept it with the dates. Mm -hmm. was like when she kept the dates, when she changed her channel's name into Hope or my, uh, my name in her contact, Hope. And I was really glad. I was really happy that I was making a difference in one's life um, and in the end uh, like she also studied with Zuhra and me at first it was me and Sevara who were teaching her and after that Zuhra but still she was coming to me teacher I'm in Zuhra teacher's classes I'm really happy that she's teaching me but I want your guidance mm -hmm. I want your guidance we used to text even in the evenings, like discussing her problems, she couldn't sleep. Like it was, she was honest. She was getting two or three hours of sleep. I was just encouraging him, encouraging her, getting about this enough sleep and, and sometimes at the expense of her homework even. And she, when she told me like, I'm not feeling good or I need some sleep, I just told her, okay, you can just skip the class today. Just have enough rest and come back with fresh attitude or fresh mind to my class tomorrow. I want to see, like, new. And Marjana, mm -hmm. her name is Marjana. And, yeah, I kind of feel that I could make a difference in her life. Maybe this is my strong suit. I can do this with every student. And I try to first reaching them like personally, not as a teacher, like their friend, like their even mother sometimes, uh, knowing that what is what what is like occurring in their life, and then based on what they're saying, first I listen. I'm a good listener, and I lend a helping hand hand to them. So maybe this is my strong suit. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. So no, I'm happy. It, it really is. It really is. Your helpful attitude literally turns someone's life around. Yeah. Right? Like, because if it weren't for you, I think she would have done something terrible. Right. Yeah. So yeah. You, you literally saved someone's life. And that's, that's, I don't, that's a very touching story you just shared with us. And that's, 
you guys developed a special bond in this yeah. process like i'm guessing like sisters now right? yeah yeah you guys do you guys still keep touch yeah still you do? still we do okay i'm, I'm glad I'm, i really am so how does it feel saving someone's life how do you feel about that yourself is it is it something you, you do you ever like think like well that's not what i signed up for like i'm here just to teach no but that's not really my business someone's problems do no. you ever does it ever cross your mind uh, no i know that it's my mission mm -hmm. i have to do this which is like if i have been given a responsibility mm -hmm. to one's life mm -hmm. because i know that getting this il stuff mm -hmm. or like getting knowledge is not about just getting into university mm -hmm. i'm changing one's mind mm -hmm. like they're getting um, broad-minded let's say um and i know that if they're facing some problems it's my job to offer them a hand and to listen to them at least i try to listen to them maybe there are sometimes problems i can't just help or i can't fix but still i just call them i have this face-to-face -face sessions i text them hey some of if i see that my if my students aren't doing well good in the exams in the mock tests every week i just text them some i think I, I just say something is going in your life that i don't know but i want to know about it mm -hmm. and they the next day the following day they come to me and we start like chatting mm -hmm. and at least they feel relieved after they share the things that they have been through so you, you ever feel awkward about asking people no, what's going I don't. on in their life no so i don't what if something too personal um right no it's not awkward for me it's not you so you're comfortable asking yeah. people stuff about their personal why is that why do you think that's okay that's that should be acceptable to ask people as someone who's not related to them first i make them feel that i am someone in their life mm -hmm. I make them feel that I'm not only their teacher, mm -hmm. but also I'm their sister, mm -hmm. or I'm or oh, their, their second mom. Yeah, second mom, and I just make them to like to pour their heart mm -hmm. in with me. And sort of open up, right? Yes, open up with me. So why do you need that? Why do you want the student to open up to you? Is it not possible just to you know just at all times keep your teacher hat on and do? do your job and teach and still get the same results because i if i think that that problem like personal stuff is getting on the way on mm. their academics mm -hmm. and i kind of think that i feel that i should know it mm -hmm. because if they can't clear their mind about that particular problem they can't just pay attention or they can't focus mm -hmm. on their studies so helping them mentally emotionally is yeah. literally your business yeah yeah so people might think that it's none of your business what's going on in my life, but it really, really literally is because it's affecting your class. Yeah, it's affecting yeah. their results. Yeah, right. This happened like mm -hmm. lately with one of my um, students it was from PA seventeen, and I think that f for the first time she was having speaking interview with me because well, like Shokruh was teaching her, mm -hmm. and she couldn't speak anything. Mm -hmm. She was just looking at me and mm. no idea. Mm -hmm. And I just started like asking about the reason why she was feeling like mm. um, tense in front of me or why she wasn't coming with answer, come up with answer. Um, and again, she said like, I have this problem and maybe this is because I can't speak. And after that, I just hugged her mm -hmm. uh, to give her comfort and it made a trick mm -hmm. it just worked well mm -hmm. like a charm mm -hmm. and she started speaking and i said mm -hmm. okay you can just pull off seven plus mm -hmm. with the speaking and mm -hmm. you can get make it like even higher mm -hmm. and she was really happy and mm -hmm. after that every day she was coming to my class and she, she just used to call me mm -hmm. and teacher can you look at me for a second uh, like and i just went out and 
can I hug you? <laughs> yeah. Her, okay. Yes. Free hugs. If yes. you guys want free hugs, go to Miss Perusa. You know where to find her. Room 303. 302. <laughs> oh, 303. 302. Yes. My bad. 302. Yeah. Free hugs. Yeah. She, she liked it. Uh-huh. And she was comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I liked it. If I had this just small... Uh, I guess it, I kind of know who you're talking about, but I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you the person in my mind after mm-hmm. the podcast like i know they dropping on the podcast uh-huh. okay yeah good thing if i think that this yeah. helps then mm-hmm. why am why i not, not? going to do it yeah why not yeah. why not do it yes yeah so t- taking more of a holistic approach to yeah. teaching right yeah so it's you're not just their teacher you're their nanny you're their companion you're their mental supporter supporter helper yeah you are their uh, sometimes doctor you are there sometimes server right whatever yeah. they want whatever they desire you are a facilitator yeah so, so whatever it takes right yeah yeah so it's old-fashioned thinking that I'm, my job is just just to teach right yeah it's just too lame way of looking at things uh, especially when you're involved in teaching but teaching is it's about it's you're shaping someone's life you're shaping yeah. the course of someone's life literally their mind so you better be responsible so there, there are no really well that's not my department there is no really that's not my jurisdiction that's, yeah. there's no really i'm not the mom so who, whatever my not my problem and that yeah. attitude will get you nowhere right yeah so right so what do you what do you say now we take a little break from you know professional life because there's so much talking about professional life and then talk a little about your personal life Sure. So what do you find yourself doing when you're not teaching or giving mm-hmm. people free hugs? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'm into, mm. let's say, poetry. You are? Yeah, I'm yeah. into reading. Uh-huh. And when I'm not teaching, when I feel that I am, let's say, on the verge of burnout, mm-hmm. breakdown, I just go to my books mm-hmm. and pick up any random book Mm. On my bookshelf, I have like and more p- than 200 books. Please tell me they are English books. <laughs> I can't say they so. They better, oh my God. <laughs> Guys, read English, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no offense to Uzbek literature, okay? It's awesome. It's amazing. But if your goal is language development, then obviously you would want to read more, you know, in their language. I read um, world r- literature in my language because i don't get the taste the same uh taste mm-hmm. uh, let's say when i'm when mm-hmm. i read in english mm-hmm. i read in english mm-hmm. but some scientific stuff mm-hmm. like i i read a book called why we sleep mm-hmm. and do you remember there was a passage about in trainer mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. i just found this book mm-hmm. and i decided to give it a try mm-hmm. and i started uh, reading it after reading a couple of pages, like it was thirty or forty, let's say I just stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also started the book, which is called "From Good to Great." Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I read uh, like several pages from mm-hmm. the book, and mm-hmm. again, I feel uh, th- there's a lot of numerical stuff and statistics. Yeah. yeah. I-, I haven't finished that book yet. Yeah. I- I'm. I'm about. I think I'm about to finish it. It's just, I think to make the most of the book, you should actually be in some leadership position yourself. Because yeah. then only then you can relate to what they're saying. Like to me, the book makes perfect sense. It talks about uh, different leadership styles and 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 sort of builds a hierarchy of good leader to yeah. you know Best. bad bad leader yeah. and the an excellent re- leader and number one lesson i learned from that book is a good leader is the one whose company whose project survives long after he's gone yeah yeah and that you're an excellent le- leader not just good leader you're an excellent leader you're top tier leader if your company or if the project you built survives long after you're gone but if it's only successful when you're around, then you're a mediocre, mediocre leader, yeah. right? So, and that's 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 basically the summary of that book. So I saved uh-huh. you the whole trouble of reading that book now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, 
so what's one book you have on your you know list you want to read um i have many books mm -hmm. but all of them are in uzbek you gotta <laughs> change that okay Ness, listen to me mm -hmm. so you see you want to get to ultimate proficiency in english then you have to make english your identity and mm -hmm. that's not going to happen unless you're constantly surrounded with content in this language i know right? but when so, i read in mm -hmm. my native language mm -hmm. uh it unwinds me mm -hmm. like i feel it's relaxed relaxing. so why you can make it you can get the same results once you switch to english it's not gonna uh -huh. get get you're not gonna get those results right away but eventually you'll start enjoying it yeah yeah but i i do read like fiction stuff mm -hmm. novels mm -hmm. i'm a novel girl mm -hmm. uh but i don't understand what's like what goes on in those novels if i read in english mm -hmm. i just tried one Mm -hmm. It's called Mary or Goodbye to Mary or mm -hmm. like, like Roman stuff. I didn't like it. And mm -hmm. I, I was just juggling from Google to book and I was looking up the new words. I wasn't sure what was just mm -hmm. going in the uh, context. And I said, okay, just mm -hmm. put it away and instead read in your language. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love reading in Uzbek. Mm -hmm. Well, but I hope after this podcast it changes because yeah. I'm a little Hopefully. agitated here right now because you want to get a nine, but you're not building the habit you need to get a nine, right? That just doesn't add up to me, honestly. Okay. Right? So and that plus sends the wrong message to our students here because mm -hmm. we're, we're always telling them to read and watch stuff in English, yeah. right? To aid in their language development. Right. This is not to say that they should not be exposed to any content in their native language, but I feel like they're already getting exposed to too much content in their native language because they're already yeah. in a country where 99% of people, percent of people speak Uzbek. That's, yeah. that's a lot of exposure, if you ask me. Yeah. There's a lot of exposure. I, why do I want it? Because I really want, there is a massive wave of foreigners coming to Uzbekistan right now with all the, you know, liber, liberalization of our economy, right? There's a lot of foreign investment, a lot of companies coming and setting up their businesses, right? And they, they are the future recruits. They are the future employers. And they want employees who can speak fluently in English. Yeah. So if anything, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to set up, set our kids up for success in their professional career, yeah. right? It's, your language is, can be your competitive edge. It can be your, literally your advantage. Yeah. Because in the workplace, you need, you, you don't want language to be a barrier. You, you, you want to say something, you want to say what's on your mind, but you don't know how to phrase it. Or when you speak, people don't respect you because you're just grammatically illiterate, right? You, yeah, have, you yeah. have ter terrible grammar or you don't know how to phrase, you don't know how to say what's on your mind. So I don't want, you know, them to have a miserable work life, right? So that what we're doing here is a necessary evil, if anything. We're doing them a massive favor. Yeah. So English books. Yeah. Fantastic. Done. Now, do you like watching podcasts? Do you? You said... You used to watch podcasts yeah. during your IELTS prep, right? Do you still watch podcasts? I bet you watch Ad Astra Muse. Yeah, I do. But... Um, oh, you do watch this podcast, our yeah. podcast. Yeah, I do. Okay, then let me ask this question real quick. Mm -hmm. What's your number one? What's your top favorite podcast so far? With Nima Majidi. Wow. Wow. That, that's a surprise, surprising pick. Yeah, I was expecting you would say uh, Savni or Babarjan yes, or Sa Frank. Savni. Uh -huh. It was also like really, uh, right like it was amazing. Alley. Yeah. Yeah. But so what would you like about Nima podcast? Oh, oh, I know. Because you guys have the same major. Yeah. He's a historian too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has the same major and he's here to pursue his dreams mm -hmm. and he knows like several languages mm -hmm. because since my childhood, mm -hmm. kind of, I also want to be a polyglot. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like several languages he counted mm -hmm. on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, maybe I also one day will mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. And maybe I also will teach some foreign students in mm -hmm. foreign universities. Mm -hmm. This is really my dream. And we have kind of 
we share some similarities. Like mm-hmm. you said, he also uh, like teach. He also teaches history to students at university, and um, he's teaching in like foreign country. Um, and this is also my dream. Mm-hmm. So that guy is the embodiment embodiment of your dreams, and there's uh, a big overlap. You guys have a lot in common. Yeah. See, and he's super smart. He's super genius. I'm not sure if a lot of guys can tell it, but he's he's very well thought out, far sighted, calculated, precise in his language. I was impressed with his vocabulary use. Yeah. I was. Because the guy is like a literal AI machine. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's how it felt like. So eloquent, so well put. Yeah. Yeah. One one in a billion guy, right? So. Yeah, the podcast podcasting. So, what other podcasts do you like to watch other than Ad Astra? I just watch random podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say, like. Um, a month ago, I had constant headache, mm-hmm. and uh, if I needed, let's say, solution to whatever I'm mm-hmm. experiencing, I just go to YouTube and write my question there and listen to the podcast. Uh, but it's not just a regular thing that I do. Um, but like whatever problem I have first. I do my research. Um, I didn't know about, let's say, this hydration stuff. Mm -hmm. But after watching several videos on YouTube, Mm -hmm. I just came to conclusion maybe one of the reasons that I was getting constant headache because of dehydration. Because I didn't used to drink water Mm -hmm. during the day. It was just in the morning Mm -hmm. and when I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. But this whole day, I was just teaching my class without... Sipping in water. Not a single cup of water. No, That's, um, no, no. I, guys, I literally take this stuff everywhere I go. You see? Yeah. Water bottle. Carry with I just water bottle. bought a couple of uh-huh. cups, uh-huh. but I wasn't using them. I was uh-huh. just putting them uh-huh. on my table, uh-huh. uh, but I wasn't drinking water. Just like water. a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I figured out that also it was just one of the... Mm-hmm. Um, factors mm-hmm. why i was feeling uh, this migraine let's say mm-hmm. because every day i was having this headache mm-hmm. without a pill i couldn't just st- like stay in the class mm-hmm. uh, especially it happened it was my last class mm-hmm. i was just sitting and looking at my students and to their eyes mm-hmm. but having because of headache i wasn't just getting what what they were translating mm-hmm. and i just left the room i used to leave the room mm-hmm. and come to the lobby and take some pills and go back to classroom oh, wow that's i wish i knew i, I wish you came to me because i would have given, given you a lot of biohacks like yeah you see because one i think teachers here sit a lot two you guys not get, getting enough liquid into your body you need you need to stay hydrated yeah. and three is fresh air fresh air Please aerate the rooms every 15, 20 minutes. Right? I do it. Yeah. And other thing you need is do you do you do any exercise? I think you should you should take up some exercise. Yeah, I do. I should. I should. You should because here's why. How much sleep changed your life? Uh sorry? How much how much like how much your life changed after you fixed your sleep issues? Um <laughs> I can say that was a like, dramatic change with yeah, dramatic improvement yeah. in your mood and yes. your overall well-being. Yeah. And once you incorporate exercise, it's it's gonna you're gonna get that same effect, but uh-huh. ten times more. Uh-huh. Ten times more. You just feel more invigorated, reinvigorated. Mm-hmm. You feel you feel rejuvenated, like you're 15 again. Uh-huh. Oh, for real, for real. Like I'm I'm in my mid 20s, but I feel 12. Okay. So, but I tried it, like. In January, uh-huh. I kind of was feeling that I was getting obese. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, I have to do something to change mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just looking at the mirror mm-hmm. and I was just seeing me mm-hmm. was totally <laughs> like different body. Uh-huh. And I said, no, no, I should just stop it. Mm-hmm. And I did like for 15 days. Mm-hmm. And after that, 
I said, okay, this mm-hmm. is, this should be enough. Mm-hmm. Maybe I lost some uh, like extra pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I didn't. Still, but you know what? When I was doing this exercise, those days I was full of energy. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I was reinvigorated. Mm-hmm. I was rejuvenated. But back when I stopped doing it, again, this tiredness stuff mm-hmm. just overcome my body. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, I think, I feel that I should start doing it. Like totally. I should take up. Totally. You should, you should get back to exercise. Like I, at this point, I can't imagine my life without exercise. In fact, if I don't exercise for three days straight, I get sick. Yeah. I literally do. I start getting high blood pressure, right? I have trouble breathing or whatever because my body at this point is, is so accustomed to getting exercise, primed to, to getting exercise. It needs some sort of stimulation. Yeah. I need to feel that pressure, physical pressure, right? Right, yeah. So there, there is, sounds, sounds like you got a lot of stuff coming up, right? Take yeah. up exercise, start listening to more podcasts and yeah, reading, reading English, English books. books. Yeah, and most importantly, set your mind on getting nine so we can collab yeah. one day. Yeah. So, so one day we can have FNM program. Hopefully. You like the sound of it? Yeah. <laughs> but we need, to, for, we need at least like, we're going to need one good one year to make it a thing. Yeah. To make it a thing. Like right now, AMM pro, ANM program is a thing. It wasn't a thing before. Yeah. Right. So you get a nine and we collab for about a year or two. And then it just becomes household name. People know what FNM program is. Or you can do F and A program. That's yeah. t- totally up to you. Yeah. All right. Sure. Before we wrap it up, I want to ask you some more questions, personal questions. And this is the part where we talk a little philosophy, right? Sure. Yeah. This. Yeah. This podcast has had, had a lot of unexpected turns, right? So we're about to make the biggest unexpected turn here. We. Yeah, go from, you know, light topic to something more deep. I'd like to talk a little about your personal philosophy. I, I would want us, want, want you to tell us about your philosophy. So what is your philosophy on life? What, what is something that drives you? Something mm-hmm. that gets you up in the morning? It is living my life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. By this, I mean that I don't want to regret one day Mm -hmm. for the things that I haven't done or for the things that I haven't accomplished, even I like eagerly want it. Mm -hmm. So um, helping my students in accomplishing my dreams, my goals and living life without regrets, it's my biggest like ambition or philosophy, uh, let's say, in life. So as I said, uh, I want to, one day, I'm not sure that I can teach English when, I'm, when I get into 50, when I turn into 50 or let's say 40 years old. I kind of feel that it is like 10 years thing maybe, maybe 15 years thing. But after that, I was just, I just want to, go abroad and having my international students and teaching them in several languages, not only in English, mm-hmm. and learning this, a couple of foreign languages, like on my bucket list, there is German and there is Russian. Mm-hmm. I'm not that good at Russian and I want to learn Arabic. So... After learning these languages, I would like to teach or I would like to have my foreign students in prestigious, top-notch universities. Mm-hmm. I want to do my uh, let, it's doctors, maybe, PhD, uh, like scientific stuff, but not now, after some time. And uh, if I kind of 
don't do it maybe one day I can be just I can regret mm -hmm. so I don't want to do this I just want uh, if I have a chance if I'm healthy I want to see myself in uh, in the just place where I want to be and this is my philosophy mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that live life with no regrets yeah right? live it to the full yes like chase your dreams yeah do you ever think your soul desires yes. so that doesn't turn into regret and haunt you when you're 50 yeah. when you're 60 when you're 70 yeah and when you, you can't physically afford it anymore right yeah right yeah. yeah that's that's very deep what's one piece of advice would you give your 16 year old self for all all those 16 year olds out there for my 16 years old i don't have any mm -hmm. advice mm -hmm. because what i did when i was in 16 years old just um, helped me to come here. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, I went through a lot of struggles, hardships, and because of those hardships, those hardships actually shaped me. And uh, I advise, I recommend the 16-year-old guys, it, I, I kind of feel that they have privilege, mm -hmm. most of them, which I didn't have back in when I was 16, when I graduated school, they should take advantage of everything that they have. They should make the most of everything and uh, not squandering their time mm -hmm. just by scrolling on social media or just uh, wasting their time somewhere or having fun because all this things uh, will just wait away one day and they should be someone that their parents maybe but first of all they should feed their ego I mean they should be someone that they want want to be in the first place but it doesn't come with just sitting on a chair or um, sleeping let's say or just playing on some games it, it doesn't come with this they should do hard work right now and it will bear fruit one day and they the, this fruit will be um just unexpected and good and they will satisfy with it mm -hmm. uh, feel satisfied i just advise this mm -hmm. um i also didn't just spend waste any of my time for doing nothing, let's say. I was trying to be productive, to be, to just, I had just limited resources, but even with these limited resources, I tried to, the, to take the, to make the most of it. So this is my advice to young, the 16 year old mm -hmm. guys, like teenagers, mm -hmm. like students, to mm -hmm. everyone. I want to share a quote here by Arnold. Uh -huh. And probably remember that quote. I shared it once on the staff group chat. Mm -hmm. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Just got to do stuff. Yes. You want results? Yeah. Take action. And I remember doing, uh, you shared one video, if you remember. Mm-hmm. I share a lot of Do videos. This, oh, yeah. Watching the podcast... No, watching this motivational stuff is not doing the thing. Mm -hmm. if, like, right, thinking about doing the thing is not doing the thing. Yeah. Or writing down that what you're going to do is not doing the thing. But doing the thing is just do, doing, doing the, the thing. thing. Yes, yeah. they should do the thing. Yeah, do the thing. That's yes. actually a quote from Modern Wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. I, I don't remember his name, his podcast but he's a pretty big guy in the self-help industry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I want to tell you a little secret right now. Mm -hmm. We're being watched by your 35-year-old self at uh -huh. this moment. So what's one message do you have for your future self? Because we're literally being watched 
by by thirty five year old Firuza.、Mm-hmm. So, what would you say to her? What I, what I would say. I'm just going there.、Uh, I'm going to the destination that 35-year-old Firuza wants,、mm-hmm. and I will just make her happy, and I will promise her to be the in the place where this 35-year-old Firuza wants. She's watching you right now. Do you want to say、yeah. anything to her? I think you should wave at her, because she's really, really <laughs> watching you. Oh yeah. Okay. Say. But I know it. Like after several years, I know that me with my family, with、mm-hmm. my children,、mm-hmm. watch it together,、mm-hmm. and I want them, especially my children,、uh, to be proud of me, to、mm-hmm. be proud of their mom, and I want to be a good mother, and I'm trying to be a good one, so. I'm going there.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll get there soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. That that was that was mind blowing. Today we talked, we touched on so many different topics about your, you know, background, your current experience here at Ad Astra,、yeah. your personal thoughts, your insights, your stories. Yeah, it was one hell of a ride having you on the podcast and talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. So I really have, appreciate it. Yeah. Any final comments you'd like to make? Any final remarks?、Um, when I when, when you when you told me like to come、mm-hmm. on the podcast,、mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what to talk about, but now I'm relieved. I am really happy that I did it, and thank you for giving me this chance to speak. And it was a nice of you to. Invite me here, and it was a good conversation.、Mm-hmm. I'm a conversation per- person. I like conversations. I like talking to people,、mm-hmm. and just opening up. Like I want my students to open up with me, and I also like to open up with others. And you gave me this chance, and、um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And hopefully one day,、uh, with nine, I、mm-hmm. will come here. Was、uh, like totally new attitude, and was reading books in English, and I mean with my new lifestyle exercise. Yeah, please exercise. Yes, with exercise, <laughs> with everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was really great、uh, talk with you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was pleasure. Yes, ma'am. And you guys heard what she said, right? Prepare for a sequel with Miss Firuza once she、yeah. gets a nine. Yeah, I can't wait. Wait for that. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. I had fun. I hope our audience had fun too, guys. Yeah, this is probably it. That's the end of our podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed our content today. If you liked, don't forget to like it, subscribe, and leave us some comments in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.